I, I, I got to challenge you a little bit, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to let Neil deGrasse Tyson do it. He just uh, put up a video recently. If you knew nothing about science and you read, say, the Bible, the Old Testament, which in Genesis is an account of nature. That's, that's what that is. And I said to you, give me your description of the natural world based only on this. You would say the world was created in six days and that stars are just little points of light, much lesser than the sun. And in fact, they can fall out of the sky. One of the signs that yeah. the second coming is that the stars will fall out of the sky and land on earth. So to even write that means you don't know what those things are. You have no concept of what the actual universe is. So everybody who tried to make proclamations about the physical universe based on Bible passages got the wrong answer. <laughs> so what happened was when science discovers things and you want to stay religious or you want to continue to believe that the Bible is, is unerring, what you would do is you would say, well, let me go back to the Bible and reinterpret it. Then you say things like, oh, they didn't really mean that literally. They meant that figuratively. So this whole sort of reinterpretation of the, how figurative the poetic passages of the Bible are came after science showed that this is not how things unfolded. Is that what happened? We kept reinterpreting the Bible based on the new science that we discovered. And it's like, oops, you know, uh, okay. He's like, look, if you just go with the Bible and you ignore science, you're going to get a lot of stuff wrong. You know, it, it, it's so much to respond to there. He's throwing up uh, what we call the conflict thesis from the 19th century, this idea that Christianity and the Bible held back progress, and uh, there's this big perpetual battle going on. That's that's utter nonsense. Um, and he's also putting particular interpretations upon some biblical passages, which I yes. recognize which passages they were as they went through that. And, uh, you know, the Bible is not real specific about a lot of the details of, say, cosmology. It's, it's rather rather general about what it says, and I think that I've written about that. That's that's a really, rather good good thing to see there. You know, many people think the earth, uh, the, the Bible teaches the earth is flat, or that the, uh, you know, the, the ge teaches geocentrism. It doesn't. It's rather, rather ambiguous about it. And what has happened is people have chosen to interpret the Bible certain ways. Like he was taught some of the things he was talking about there was uh, some stuff that came from Thomas Aquinas, you know, 800 years ago, bringing in Aristotelian and Ptolemaic thinking into it. And the Roman Catholic Church ended up endorsing that. And even some of the early reformers did, as it turned out. And so when the paradigm shift happened in science uh, 500 years ago, 400 years ago, I should say, it uh, kind of caught people flat footed. But it wasn't that what we were discovering contradicted scripture. What it did is it contradicted what people thought the Bible said this whole time. And that's the key issue. What does the Bible actually say? And it turns out it oftentimes says something very different from what most of us think it says. And I've been wrong about that myself in the past. So I can, I'm not just criticizing other people, I'm criticizing myself because I've changed my mind about some things because I had some wrong ideas. So that is the key, though. He's pointing out they that they had to reinterpret Scripture. Really, you're not having to reinterpret Scripture. You're having to change uh, a preconceived idea, your interpretation. About what Scripture says, yeah. Yes. The, the whole idea is they, they try to say that, you know, the 600, 400 years ago, uh, about 1600, shortly thereafter, with, with what we call the Galileo Affair, uh, that the uh, you know Roman Catholic Church was saying, well, you, what you're teaching about the sun, uh, Earth going around the sun rather than the other way around, that that violates what Scripture says. Scripture doesn't say that. Yeah. That's what people got from their science, by the way, from Aristotle and Ptolemy, and then they turned around and said, well, it must be what the Bible says. And in fact, much of the 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 refutation given to Galileo 400 years ago didn't come from Scripture; it came from science of the day. Uh, so he's mischaracterizing a lot of things there, <laughs> and that's a common common mischaracterization that people give. What an interesting perspective that actually what we're correcting is we're correcting the science. We're not correcting the scripture. Oh, the whole thing 400 years ago was a scientific dispute. It was not a biblical dispute. Um, people objected, even, even Martin Luther, when he first heard about Copernicus a uh, hundred years before that, he said, this fool, uh, he didn't mention by name, wants to overturn all of astronomy. Well, yeah, he was. <laughs> and he went on to say something from Joshua about the sun standing still. But he said, first of all, overturn all of astronomy. And he was talking about Aristotelian Ptolemaic astronomy. So Luther was half right on that part. And that was the problem. People were bringing secular sources, pagan sources in this case, in, and interpreting scripture and insisting then that's what the Bible taught. And that's where they got it completely wrong. Um, so, so it really was a scientific squabble four centuries ago, not a biblical one at all. 
And now they've turned it around today to say, oh, they're actually having to change their interpretation of the Bible. And really, they were just simply correcting the modern science. Modern science has a long history of being wrong. And Neil deGrasse Tyson, we're still doing that. And you're wrong. Absolutely. The earth isn't yep. billions of years old. Okay. And there's a, par there's a parallel there today because now uh, I can give numerous examples of where people have interpreted scripture in terms of the current science. And then when it changes, it leaves them kind of holding the bag there. And uh, in the case of um, uh, today, we're probably going to touch on this, uh, the Big Bang has become the dominant thought that everybody wants to now interpret Scripture. And I'm saying, folks, listen, time out. You need to consider the fact that we've been down this road a number of times, and it never <laughs> ended well when we did that. Why are you expecting it to be different this time? Because I am fantastic. The, the Big Bang model will not be around eventually, so it will be replaced by something else.